name is Malik Orin, and I am studying to become a microbiologist. And today I'll just go into a brief introduction into microbiology um, and a look at a few career paths which microbiology can do. In. And believe me, it is going to be interesting because microbiology is one of, if not the most interesting science. All right. So just to go through um, exactly what we'll be doing today. We have our outline here. So first, the introduction to microbiology. We'll look at the microbial zoo, bacteria, viruses, fungi, um, the invisible world of microbes, microbiology and the environment, microbiology and medicine, and finally, careers in microbiology. Then of course we'll we'll sum summarize everything. Um, just a trick. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, awesome. Thank you. All right, before I before I um skip the slide, what do you guys think microbiology is, based on the name alone? Anyone? No one wants to test their knowledge to see if they know what microbiology is. All right, I'll tell I'll tell as you guys know, but you're just a bit shy right now. So, um, microbiology is the scientific study of microorganisms and how they interact with the world around us. Right. Um. So what that means is that we would study organisms such as the bacteria, viruses, fungi, and other tiny organisms. And the instrument we use to study these organisms is called the microscope. As the name suggests, micro means small, scope means to see. So the microscope is used to see small um, organisms or small objects. And these are some basic, part, basic parts of the microscope. We have the eyepiece, the objective, the mirror, the base, and adjustment knob. Now the eyepiece is also called the ocular lens and it's used to view the magnified image produced by the objectives. So when you pay, you place a specimen um, or the, the slide under the, the objective, you put your eyes um, on the eyepiece and you'll be able to see the magnified image. The objective are the um, lenses responsible for capturing the light and magnifying the specimen. Um, some microscopes also have what's called a mirror. But in modern microscopes, we have a built-in light. And it's basically a source of light that directs light through the specimen and into the objectives. Now, let us take a look into the microbial zoo. Um, from the screen, you can see that there are different organisms, different shapes, different sizes. Some have here, some look a bit like peas. Um, so one thing you have to understand in microbiology is that it has a wide variety of um, organisms and they, they all come in different shapes, sizes, and they all have their own characteristics. So let's just look at them. So as a microbiologist, we study um, we study organisms from the three domains, eukaryotes or eukaryota, archaea, and bacteria. Um, 
just a quick bio listen. Eukaryotes are organisms which contain um, their genetic material bounded within a, 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 um, a membrane, sorry. So that would be the, the nucleus. Um, for the archaea and the bacteria, those organisms, um, their genetic material, they, their DNA or RNA is spread throughout the cell because it's not bounded in a nucleus as the eukaryotes. And that's one of the main distingu di distinctions, sorry, between them. Um, so on the bacteria branch, we can say we have gram-positives, spirochetes, proteobacteria, cyanobacteria, plantomyces, green filamentous bacteria, and equifex. And these are all single cellular, micro single cellular organisms, sorry. Same for archaea, they're single cellular. They include sorry, pyrodictium, thermoproteus, methanococcus, methanosarcina, and halophiles. Um, for eukaryotes, there are single cellular and um, multicellular organisms. In microbiology, we just focus on the single cellular organisms. Um, these would include fungi um, and algae. All right, so let's take a deeper look into bacteria. So firstly, bacteria are very small. They're very simple, single-celled, and their genetic material is not enclosed in a nuclear membrane. And what's the word we use to describe um, organisms that do not have their genetic material enclosed in a nuclear membrane? Does anyone remember the word? It starts with P. Guys, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Does anyone remember the word? You can say yes or no, or maybe so. No. All right. <laughs> so yeah, they're prokaryotes. Prokaryotes do not um, have their genetic material, whether DNA or RNA, in a nuclear membrane. All right. Thank you for answering, by the way. Um. So the main shapes of bacteria would include the bacillus, the coccus, and the spiral, um, rod, sphere, or corkscrew, respectively. So they're shown to the left here. Right here, we'll have our, our bacillus bacteria. They're shaped like rods. Um, right here, we'll have our coccus or cocci bacteria. And right here, we'll have our corkscrew bacteria. All right, let's look at viruses. So viruses are described as ultra microscopic. Now, that means that they are very, very tiny um, organisms, even smaller than bacteria. They're often classified as non-living. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with what would classify something as living or non-living. But just to clarify, um, what specifically classes viruses as non-living is the fact that they lack the cellular machinery necessary for independent metabolism and reproduction, um, which makes them what we call obligate intracellular parasites. So what that means, in other words, is that um, viruses can only um, reproduce, they can only replicate by hijacking a whole cell. So they have to go into an animal or a bacteria or whatever for them to um, 
reproduce. They are also infectious agents, as you might or should have known. Um, and as I said before, they're inactive when found outside the host cell. Some examples of viruses are the influenza virus, SARS-CoV-2, which is the coronavirus, um, and rhinoviruses, which cause common cold. Do you guys know of any other viruses which you'd like to mention? There's a lot, you know, guys. You have human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, um, human papillomer, papillomer virus. There are a lot of them. Would AIDS be considered a virus? Um, not necessarily. So it would be the... HIV, remember that HIV progresses to AIDS. So it'd be HIV, that would be the virus itself. And then um, AIDS would just be the condition of the person. So that's when they're um, severely immunocompromised. So um, you're on the right path, but it, it would more be HIV than AIDS. Any other, any other examples? Is dengue a virus or would it be a disease? Dengue. Um, I believe dengue is a viral infection, but um, I can't remember the specific virus that caused it. But yeah, you are on the right path. Um, that's it for viruses. We also have, we also study um, fungi in, in microbiology. Um, and I, I put in, in, I put below fungi more than just mushrooms because I know that we usually associate fungi or fungus with mushrooms or um, organisms that have the, what was it called? Um, Multicellular organisms that, that have a dome shape on them. Those are not only fungus. So um, you will be introduced or you are introduced to different organisms such as yeast in microbiology um, and moles also, which are filamentous and grow on various surfaces. All right. Um, just to note, fungi are used in some food production, such as bread and beer. The fungus that is used is Staphylococcus, um, sorry, not Staph. So I, I'll get back to that one. But there's a fungus, a yeast that is used. Um, it ferments the, it ferments and produces beer and also, um, it's the raising agent in, in bread because it produces carbon dioxide. All right. The invisible world of microbes. I'm going to ask you guys this question. How many microbes do you think are found in the normal human body? Over a million. You correct. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, just to just to give you guys um a number, the human body contains about ten to the thirteen cells routinely. 
right? But it also harbors about 10 to the 14 bacteria. So you, you can see the large amount of bacteria which is on the human body. And I'm not speaking about like people who are on the roadside or, you know, people who are um, with reason very dirty. I'm speaking about if even if you just bathe or um, just you sitting there or, or standing there, you have a lot of bacteria on your body right now. And when I first learned this, this was one of the things which um, caused some form of trauma for me because I was surprised to know how much bac bacteria are on me. <laughs> um, so for example, if you're looking at the image on the right, the hands, it says it has 100 at 1000 bacteria per centimeters cube. So what that means, imagine there is a one centimeter by one centimeter square in the palm of your hand. In that square, there are 1,000, approximately 1,000 bacteria or other microorganisms there. And there are over 100 um, different species of bacteria. So you can just imagine how, how much, how much um, bacteria is on your entire hand. And this is why um, we're told not to put our hands in our face or our mouth because our hands are very dirty. Um, also our forehead, scalp, armpit, saliva, and uh, obviously the feces and the nose mucus. So our body is uh, home for these um, bacteria or, or microbes in general. Um, these microbes can be symbiotic or they can be harmful. So it can be helpful or they can be harmful. Some of which are, are symbiotic are the bifidobacteria, the propionibacteria, and so, sorry, propionibacterium acnes and lactobacillus. Um, the lactobacillus is a gut bacteria, as in it's grown in the the um, digestive tract. Um, and what it does is that it produces lactic acid, which helps to maintain a slightly acidic environment in the gut that discourages the growth of harmful bacteria because some bacteria can't um, survive in acidic conditions. Um, the propionibacterium acnes that is mostly found on the skin. And despite its association with acne, because it can cause acne, this bacterium also has beneficial roles in maintaining skin health by inhibiting the growth of harmful skin microbes. Um, the bifidobacteria. These bacteria are also found in the gut and help break down complex carbohydrates. So what they do is aid in the digestion process and promote a healthy gut environment. Um, harmful bacteria would be like E. coli, Hestitri coli, um, Candida albicans, and Staphylococcus aureus. The E. coli, um, most of the strains are harmless, but there are a few strains which can cause foodborne illnesses or severe infections. Um, the Candida albicans are a yeast that is part of the normal microbiome, but it can become problematic when it overgrows because you know that anything too much is bad for you. So it leads to conditions like yeast infections and ver on various parts of the body. Um, the Staphylococcus aureus, it's most commonly referred to as Staph or Staph. And this bacterium can cause various infections, which includes skin infections, food poisoning, and even some serious bloodstream infections. So the takeaway from this is that the body naturally has a lot of microbes, some which are good, some which are bad, right? All right, let's look at microbes and the environment. Um, so microbes break down organic matter into 
simpler compounds by releasing nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium back into the soil. Um, if any of you are in high school, you might be, you might be familiar with um, nitrogen fixing bacteria. So some example of this would be the rhizobium, the frankia, the azoarchus, and the rhodobacter. Those are all nitrogen fixing bacteria. Um, microbes also aid in soil health. The microbes help decompose organic matter, improve soil structure and nutrient availability. There is a fungi called the mycorrhizal, mycorrhizal fungi, and it forms symbiotic relationships with plants and enhance their nutrient uptake. Um, there's also environmental balance with microbes. So we have, for example, the methanthropic bacteria, which consume, consumes methane. And we know that methane is a greenhouse gas. So um, the methanthropic bacteria would take care of that for us. Let me see. Pollution cleanup, right. So certain microbes can degrade pollutants like oil, pesticides, and heavy metals. Um, there is a process called bioremediation and relies on these microbes to clean up contaminated sites. So say, for example, um, there's an oil spill in the ocean. What scientists have found is that if they, um, if they place enough of these microbes in that oil spill location, um, they basically eat it up and protect the, the waters, protect the environment from the damage from the oil spill. Um, some bacteria which which take care of this are the pseudomonas bacteria. They break down the hydrocarbons in the oil and turn them into um, carbon dioxide. Um, we also have oxygen production. Interesting fact, oxygen, which um, is essential for life, as you should know. It's mostly produced on Earth, that is, by microorganisms. So not in high school, we're taught that um, plants, since them being um, photosynthetic organisms, are the, are the ones that um, put back oxygen into the air. However, microbiologists have found that most of the oxygen that we have is from microbes, um, such as the cyanobacteria, which is found in oceans, because there are photosynthetic microbes. All right, microbiology in medicine. Um, so microbiology is contribution spans from basic research to practical applications, right? So we have roles like antibiotic development, microbes like penicillium fungus produce penicillin, and that just note is the first antibiotic. Um, in understanding the microbial metabolism, it helps to develop antibiotics that target specific pathways. We have Another example, such as a streptomycin, which is derived from streptomyces bacteria, and it treats tuberculosis. Um, microbes also help in vaccine development. They're used to create vaccines by triggering immune responses. So what it does is that, or what we do is that we would create a weakened or inactivated microbe and we place it inside um, a person. So what that would do is that the body would, would notice a foreign object and create an immune response, and it would um, the body would produce antibodies for this bacteria so, um, or this microbe. So um, what that does is that the body will remember this microbe and the next time it's infected then it will have the memory of the antibodies and it will come and attack the the microbe 
um, we call this attenuation. It's basically just weakening the virus so that it can't cause you any damage. Um, it's what's done with measles vaccine um, and hepatitis B vaccine. All right. Um, microbiologists also aid medicine by understanding and treating diseases. So we have pathogen identification. Um, through microbial analysis, we identify pathogen causing diseases. So um, DNA sequencing reveals microbial genetic makeup for precise diagnosis. Um, this was done with COVID. Um, th that's how we get we got to identify it as SARS-CoV-2. Um, we also have drug discovery. Studying microbial mechanisms informs drug development. Targeting enzymes and unique unique to microbes helps design effective treatments. An, an example of this would be. Um, the treatment of HIV or AIDS. We have antiretrovirals, which target specific proteins in the um, HIV, and that's what is used to treat it. Um, we also have gut microbiome research. Uh, remember earlier when I said that we all have our natural flora, we all have um a group of bacteria or a group of microbes rather that live on us they also live in us <laughs> so um in in medicine in microbiological medicine we study gut microbes gut microbes and the impact it has on the, the microbes have on digestion and immunity and the overall health of a person um, probiotics and fecal mi microbiota transplants treat gut-related disorders. Um, so we have probiotic supplements which are used to improve gut health. I believe the lactobacillus, as was mentioned before, as a um, symbiotic bacteria. Yeah, that's one of the um, probiotics supplements that doctors would recommend. Um, Microbiologists also aid in genetic engineering. So microbial genes are man manipulated for beneficial purposes. Um, in the treatment of, di of diabetes with insulin, um, we use Escherichia coli um, and the, the bacteria to, to produce insulin in the body. We use the CRISPR-Cas9 technology for gene ed editing of this bacteria. Um, all right, so now to look at some careers in microbiology. So obviously we have medicine and healthcare. Um, clinical microbiologists diagnose infections, prescribe appropriate treatments, and work in hospital labs. So an example of what they commonly treat is like staph, Staphylococcus aureus, which cause skin infections. Um, they also, we also have medical researchers which study microbes to develop vaccines, antibiotics, and their treatments. So that's with medicine. In research and academia, we have microbiologists who explore fundamental aspects of microbial life, genetics, and evolution. Um, they also teach microbiology in universities. So our, my lecturers here at um, UWE, they would be in research and academia. Well, actually, some of them are in medicine and public health, but they're mo mostly focused on research. Um, microbiology also spans into the food industry. As was mentioned before, when I was going through the fungi slide, um, we use microbes such as yeast and lactobacillus in, in production of yogurt, cheese, um, what else, beer, bread, 
there are a lot of things um which a lot of products a lot of food products which um utilizes microbes because they're cheaper um and that's why we work in that industry in environmental science those microbiologists study microorganisms and their roles in the ecosystem um they also do pollution control and waste treatment in agriculture those microbiologists enhance crop yield through soil health and pest management um what's the public health and epidemiology all right so that public health microbiologists monitor disease outbreaks and contribute to disease prevention strategies um the epidemiologists would track infectious diseases spread and advise healthcare healthcare interventions um we're getting to the end of our presentation now uh i have a well a couple of interesting facts here alien microbes so um microbes have survived space travel which has implications for the possibility of life on other planets and I don't know about you guys, but I personally find that very interesting. Um, on that note, I just want to mention that scientists who study these microbes are called astrobiologists, and it's an emerging field in microbiology. And what they do is that they study extremophiles to understand potential life on other planets. Um, we also have microbial art. So there are some new artists that use pigmented bacteria to create living artwork by allowing them to grow in specific patterns and colors. Because as I mentioned initially, microbes come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, forms. Some glow, some don't. And artists use these microbes to um, create their art. All right. Um, before I go on my summary, can you guys tell me, um, can you each tell me at least two things which you've learned so far? Um, one thing I've learned so far is basically that, um, fungus, some fungus like yeast and I don't remember, I don't know how to pronounce the name of the other one, are used to make food like bread and beer. All right. Awesome. Um, anyone else? All right, since there's no one else, um, just to summarize, microbiology is a study of tiny organisms that can't be seen by the naked eye. This includes bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, and algae. Um, they have, we have both helpful and harmful bacteria. Um, viruses are tiny troublemakers that can only replicate inside the vein cells. Um, fungi and compost, mushrooms, moles, and yeast, and contribute to food production and decomposition. The human microbiome consists of microorganisms on, on and inside our bodies. Um, microbes play a very important role in nutrient cycling, environmental balance, and pollution control. Microbiology contributes to medicine and Microbes are used in food production through fermentation for products like yogurt and bread. Um, all right, so that is my presentation. Do you guys have any questions? One relating to the slide and the presentation. Can you please send it in the classroom, please?
All right, I'll try to make it available for you guys. I'll I'll email it to um one of one of your teachers. Any other question or that's it? I think that's it from me. All right. Thank you again for listening. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Bye. Same to you. Bye.